This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But, I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? Ah yes, our little chat on the intercom. You're looking for the premier broker for all of Monarch. Which you knew was me, clearly. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts, always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Careful, I know that line. I use it all the time. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. Caring or not won't change the facts of the matter. I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Exactly what I was thinking. They hurt us all with their pettiness. Which of course has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Graham and Sanjar to stop transmitting on their end. You do that, I'll be here waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it, plus a vat of patience. Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. We'll call it an exchange for your help with the broadcasts. Ask me what you will. Not much, admittedly. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. As far as what's between us, I mean. Outside of that, well... That's a raptodon of another color. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations, considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. There are so many members. Do specify. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. Exactly. But you didn't hear so much as a whisper of such from me. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny... MSI's own... Luckily for you, I am a very... They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? 
Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat-drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. You mean between MSI the Iconoclast and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind Monarch. Back when the colony was still Terra One and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our salvation. I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. Precisely. The other corporations were fleeing because of the Hazard Clause declaring Terra One uninhabitable. But MSI had lagged behind, giving Sanjar and Graham an opportunity. Take over MSI, stay here while the other corps left, take over the planet. Precisely. Without me, they never would have done more than play revolution in hushed whispers over scuzzy kale ales in the tavern. Thus, the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle, that he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to reform. And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is quite morally gray. Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews, but he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, he's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One once the other corporations had abandoned the planet. The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their homes in the night. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. How low you seemingly regard my trade. I may have a secret for you, for the right exchange. How low you be a doll and shoot any marauders you spot on the way down. <laughs> 